Hello everybody and welcome! Yes, it is that time again. Another version of Kerbal Space Program has been released, but no, unfortunately Christmas didn't come early. The new release is not the highly anticipated KSP2, but instead an incremental update to the original. This time KSP 1.8, aptly named More Boosters, because we get exactly that, more boosters. Please keep in mind that everything I show you here is based on a preview version of KSP 1.8 and also I did not have enough time to play with it to notice if there are any big problems or bugs. When you load up the game for the first time, an update message greets you with some of the main improvements including an update to the underlying Unity engine, which enables apparently new terrain shaders that you need to enable in the settings menu, and the developers promise that frame rate stutters should be less likely than before and I quote, for instance, frame rate when your rocket accidentally crashes into something has been improved dramatically, so your agony is shorter and sweeter. Uh, okay, I'll be the judge of that. Let me just fire up an about 900 part vehicle that I will show you in more detail in an upcoming video. I'm going to accidentally crash this over here and let's see how short and sweet my agony will be, comparing it side by side to KSP 1.7.3. No edits, no time stretching or speeding up. So yeah, definitely a quicker time to boom, but also not completely the same boom. Yeah, what do you think? Will this make your agony shorter and sweeter? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about the visual improvements. The new shaders have a noticeable effect, especially on the planets and moons that also got a new texture treatment. These are the Moon, Minmus, Duna, Ike, which is admittedly visually similar to the moon, Eve, and Gilly, which of course is not really suited to drive on. Regarding those drills, there's also a new visual effect when they are active, throwing up prettier dirt, I guess. KSP 1.8 is called More Boosters, and there are actually more boosters in here. Solid boosters, that is. We got two new 0.625 meter solids named Might and Shrimp. Then there is the 1.8 meter Pollux booster for those who have the Making History expansion. And then 2.5 meter boosters called Thoroughbred and Clydesdale. Not only that, the 2.5 meter boosters also offer thrust vectoring. Yes, that's right, you can now gimbal control your burning stick of fiery death up until it burns out. Now that's cool and will help a lot. Players with the Making History expansion will now also enjoy new part variants for the size 3 tanks. There is also a new orange variant for the 3.75 meter nose cone. With their new orange paint coat and the new boosters you can now make a space shuttle replica that looks a lot more like the original. Albeit with weird proportions since the boosters are way too big and the tanks too small. It's quite a better fit with the 5 meter diameter tanks, but they did not get the orange treatment. Why? Maybe that will come with an 1.8.1 or even 1.9 update. Speaking of reskins, the service bays have gotten a visual overhaul. They now fit better with the overall style of the game and their doors open in a more sensible and less space consuming way. A small improvement, but a welcome one. If you have the Breaking Ground expansion, there are some improvements there as well. Most noticeably added fan shrouds and the ducted fan blades, intended to move a lot of air when not a lot of space is available. Not sure I already got the hang of them, though. 
Then there's a bunch of quality of life improvements for the base game. Let's start with map view. You can now stage when in map view. So if you have a maneuver where you really need to watch the orbital path but have to stage in between, you no longer have to frantically switch back to the flight view and then back to map view. I like that a lot. Also, the not-so-obvious Warp to Next Maneuver Node feature is now directly integrated next to the nav ball. Just press the green arrow icon and your vehicle will warp to one minute before you need to start your burn. But the biggest gameplay improvement is action groups. Finally, we can now change action groups after launching the vessel. This is especially handy when you have built a complex exploration vehicle and are already at your destination only to realize you forgot to set action groups. We now also have the possibility to define different sets of action groups, meaning you can use one action key for multiple things depending on circumstances. This is great when you have a vehicle that needs to behave differently when the mission situation requires it. So yeah. A very useful addition indeed that I also need to play around with a lot more. So overall KSP 1.8 appears to be another solid update for the original game while development on the upcoming version 2 is happening in parallel. Since PAX West almost a month ago there haven't been any updates on that front unfortunately. It's actually a bittersweet feeling seeing the original game finally getting some features and improvements fans have been asking for years while knowing that the new installment is coming soon. Of course, you will have to wait until all your favorite mods are up to date to fully utilize 1.8's full potential, but unless there are some nasty bugs that are still hiding in there, I already mentioned I only had little time to look at this. KSP 1.8 feels like a great improvement for a game that is still going strong years after its initial release. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.